Bowser's Inside Story, I thought, had a lot of areas in the overworld, and it kind of does, but when you actually combine some of the areas together, there's really only seven areas in this game, which isn't a bad thing, obviously, but it definitely made this list much easier to make, and it makes me not procrastinate on this, so you better say thank you to me. Also, I'm not going to be counting any of the areas inside of Bowser. I actually already did a video on that, and I'm pretty sure it was my first video on Bowser's Inside Story, so I'm not going to be counting it for this list. But other than that, let's get started on this video. But actually, before we get started on this video, make sure to leave a like on this video. Let's try to hit 100 likes. Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, because I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But other than that, let's actually get started. Is there really a bad location in the overworld of Bowser's Inside Story? No, but Black Beach just doesn't really do anything. I mean, it has a cool concept, I guess. It doesn't really do anything with it, but it's called Black Beach. There's literally teeth with cavities all over the place, and some of the enemies are literally just teeth, which is, I mean, I guess it's kind of cool, but it doesn't really do anything with the world, so it doesn't really stand out to me. The first visit here with just Bowser, it's at the very beginning of the game. You don't really do anything. I mean, you get the vacuum block, you fight the sea pipe statue, which is a decent boss, but that's it. That's really the only things you do here. So, it's really nothing. I mean, you got fire back, but that's not really something you do specifically in Black Beach, so I don't really count it. But then the second visit, you're forced to use Mario and Luigi to get the third star here. I don't like this part of the game, because you are constantly thinking that I'd rather be using Bowser. That's at least what I was thinking, because right now he's trapped in the safe. So you're forced to use Mario and Luigi, which personally, I don't really care about. I mean, this game focuses on Bowser. Whatever, I already talked about that in the Mario and Luigi game ranking, so you can check that out if you want to. So this part of the game, I mean, all you're really doing is climbing a mountain with Balloon Mario, which isn't really bad. Again, I don't dislike this place, but it is just kind of boring compared to what other areas do in this game. So in that regard... I don't really care about Black Beach, it just doesn't really do anything interesting. Again, it's not a bad area, but since it doesn't do anything interesting, it definitely deserves to be at the bottom of this list. So KV Cape isn't at the bottom of the list. I'm gonna have some explaining to do, and to be fair, it's really for one reason and one reason alone, but let's talk about each visit. So the first visit, it's the first area in the game with Bowser, you're not gonna have much. I mean, all you can do is punch and move. That's it. That's really sad, but you can't do anything else. And, it, I mean, yes, it's gonna make the place bland. I agree with that. I like the music, though. I like the mid miss fight that you're forced to lose at. And I think the Goombas that you fight, the fat Goombas, are okay enough. But the second visit makes it definitely better, because you have to go into the underground of KV Cape, which has trained Goombas, which are really fun to fight, and I really like the drill minigame. But the main reason I really like KV Cape, and why it's above Plaque Beach, in my opinion, is the tunnels that the drill creates, because what it does is that it makes a circle, it makes a loop that goes from the Toad Town Underground to Bowser's Castle and back to KV Cape. I think that is really cool that you can actually go around in a circle. I really like that. You actually get to see a view of it when you actually go into stuff like Dimble Wood. It's just really cool. I really like that part of it. I really like that you just travel and walk on that railroad, and that's the only reason why it is above Plaque Beach. So take that as you will. But that is why it's not at the bottom of the list, even though it is the first area. But for a first area, it does do pretty well. So Toad Town is... Toad Town. That's really how I describe it. Toad Town is Toad Town. And the main reason that's a problem is because this place is extremely generic in my opinion, which isn't really a terrible thing, but it's just not really that interesting to me. So that's not a good thing for this place. Also, the undergrounds are not very good, mainly because you have to use the shell, which I don't like using. So in that regard, it's not very good. But, I mean, Toad Town itself 
The main thing about it is that you have Dr. Toadly, you have the Bowser fight here, and the side quests are pretty good. So, all three of those things definitely saved Toadtown from being at the bottom of the list, but I just kind of wish that this place was more like Wakeport than just a generic shopping area, because Wakeport actually had you do some good stuff, like saving Big Massive. That was a very memorable part about this place. Also, the Wiggler and Popple stuff. That was, well, even though that fight was somewhat generic in my opinion, it was a good thing about the place. But here, it's just Toad Town, and that's why it's only number five. I just learned today that it's called Blubble Lake instead of Bubble Lake, so uh, I just realized I have to say the word Blubble seriously. How am I going to do that without laughing? Uh, <laughs> I'll, tr I'll try my best. Blubble Lake is, well, I'm combining this segment with both Blubble Lake and Bumsy Plains because they're basically the same location. Bumsy Plains you go to first, and the place is good. All you're really doing though is just going through some platforming segments with the sliding punch, which isn't bad or anything. It's obviously fun, but there really isn't anything there. You also fight some enemies, but that's it. But with Blubble Lake, it's basically that, but more expanded. Obviously, something about it is that you have more abilities, which is nice. I mean, you go underwater, which in this game is good. The reason why it's good is because you only control one character, and you actually move faster than normal. So, in that regard, it works. Compared to a game like Superstar Saga, which was somewhat annoying to control two bros. But here, it works. I also like the enemies in Blubble Lake, the crocodiles and the bee hosses. They work really well. I mean, this place just has more stuff going on. And it's just more interesting to be around. And this is why I actually like the place. It's why it's higher than places like Black Beach, and KB Cape. I like the place. Not really too much, because you do have to deal with the nose deck game, and that's really the only reason why it's number four, because that mini game is awful. People talk about the carrot mini game being bad. The nose deck is just terrible to deal with, and that's why it's number four. That's really the only problem I have with the place, though, so that's why it's right at the middle of the list. Dimblewood is the last of the basic areas in Bowser's Inside Story, in my opinion. I mean, this is a very basic area, just like the ones we talked about. It is the best because there's the most interesting stuff here, but, again, there's just not that many interesting areas in Bowser's Inside Story. It made it very hard to talk about for this video. Probably another reason why I procrastinated on this video. But back to Dimblewood itself. The first visit you have here, you have to deal with the Bonsai Bill with the Elite Trio. You have to get it from Wiggler, where you have Gut Check, which isn't very good. But you have the Wiggler fight, which is okay enough. But I mean, everything there is interesting to say the least. You also learn the sliding punch here, which is good. And you have the giant battle here, which was, again, okay enough. But the second visit, it's why it's number three. I mean, yes, you're only with Mario and Luigi, and I am thinking that I would rather use Bowser here, but the thing about it that does make it interesting is that you're doing some very unique stuff here. You have to get attack pieces to knock over the Sage that I talked about with Black Beach. But, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Mario gets captured by the sock enemies, right? Uh, so, <laughs> Luigi tries to chase Mario, and he goes inside a big sock, and then he shrinks down, and now he's just in a sock, and he can go on spikes. It's very unique, and it's very funny to think about. And it's just, it's so weird and unique, and that's one of the main things that actually sticks out to me in Bowser's Inside Story, which is why Dimblewood is so high on this list. It's not phenomenal or anything, but it's just so unique that it deserves to be in the top half of this list. It's why it's number three. So Bowser's Castle is number two. It was pretty obvious this was not going to be number one because the number one is definitive. It's very predictable from the beginning of the video, but Bowser's Castle is still a great location. I mean, there's three times you visit here, technically. We'll just get the last visit out of the way. It's optional. It's where you fight the shrooms, you do the puzzle with Mario and Luigi that has clues spread out the castle, 
and you get the magic window if you beat the shrooms. And I like the fight because it's the shrooms in Bowser's Inside Story and not in Partners in Time, so it's a bit interesting. But back to the actual visits, the non-optional ones. The first visit you have, there's no enemies. All you're doing with Bowser is just exploring your castle. This used to be your castle, but has been turned in to Fawful Theater. It's not your castle anymore. All your enemies are hypnotized. And it's very interesting to see. I really like this. I don't really want any enemies or puzzles. I just want to see what happened to my castle. It's very interesting to see. And obviously the Fawful Theater itself is good. And you have to fight Midmiss here, which is also a good fight in my opinion. Also, Bowser gets stuff with food. He gets fat. He sinks through the floor. Also pretty funny, but I'm not cutting the flab zone for this video, obviously. The second time you visit here is to get the second star cure in the safe that's in Bowser's castle for some reason. What, whatever. So, it it works really well. Mainly because you have the body slam here, and the body slam is used pretty well with trying to dodge bob -ombs. I think that works really well. And the platforming and the puzzles are here, mainly. That's the main thing that was missing from the first visit, even though obviously I didn't mind that. And also, there's enemies here with the mech suits, I guess they're called mech suits, uh, that has enemies trapped inside, and there's the sick thwomps, which is also pretty interesting for an enemy. I really like Bowser's castle. The main thing I love about it is just seeing what happened to his castle. This used to be your castle? It's not anymore. Just seeing the aftermath of it is really good, and it's why it's so high on the list, but it's not going to be number one. I'm not going to stall it anymore. You guys know exactly what number one is. Come on. Of course this is going to be number one. It's so obvious that Peach's Castle is the best area in Bowser's Inside Story. It's a given. It's so dang good. This is the entire endgame of Bowser's Inside Story. And the endgame is so dang good. I mean, there's so many good bosses here. Dark Fawful. Dark Star doesn't count for this list. But uh, obviously Dark Bowser. Uh, you got Blizzard Midbiz. Super Peach's Castle of Fury was definitely a good giant battle. I also like the enemies here. They're difficult, but they're really fun to fight. Obviously, the music is so dang good. Deep Castle is in my top five favorite tracks in the Mario RPGs. It's just phenomenal in that regard. Also, I really like that you learned the spike ball. It makes it much easier to move around and obviously more fun to move around. I like all the secrets in this place. I like chasing the Fawful Copters, trying to get those keys. That's really fun to do. I love so much about this place, but another thing that actually carries over from Bowser's Castle is that you get to see what Fawful has done to Peach's Castle, but I actually think it's better here because at the very least with Bowser's Castle, you can kind of tell that it was Bowser's Castle in a way, but with Peach's Castle, it's just been completely converted to Fawful's. It's ridiculous to see. Also, you get to see Peach's Castle at the beginning of the game, so you actually know what it looks like normally, but here... It's just completely, just completely destroyed. I'm just shocked. I know I'm gushing over this place. I get it. But I love this place so much. This is one of my favorite areas in all the Mario RPGs. And I'm really showing it right now. It definitely deserves to be number one. And I know it was obvious. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video, though. Make sure to leave a like. Let's try to get 100 likes. I'm going to have my podcast link in the description below. The Flatmates. And also, make sure to subscribe if you like this long. I really appreciate that. But other than that, G-bye.